Hello, I'm Mr. Polk and welcome to my kitchen. You're finally at the point where you're ready to decorate your cake. You baked your cake, you learned how to do all the piping, you just made the chocolate decor. Now we're ready to put this whole thing together. And what we're going to do is, before we get to the cake, there's one little thing I want to show you how to make, and that is chocolate ganache. And ch chocolate ganache is used a lot in the pastry world. Um, this recipe starts with about six ounces of dark chocolate chips, semi-sweet, two ounces of milk. And then you take uh, between six and seven ounces of heavy cream and about a tablespoon of butter. Okay. And you're going to bring it to a boil. As soon as you bring it to a boil, take it off the stove and pour it into the chocolate chips. Make sure you keep an eye on it. Uh, when you boil heavy cream, it's very easy for it to boil over and make a mess. And then you're going to let this sit for a little bit, and you're letting the heavy cream melt the chocolate. Okay? So these chocolate chips are at room temp. They're melting because of the heavy cream. Once they start to melt, you can start to whisk. And believe it or not, you're truly creating an emulsion. Okay? So um, someone asked, what is chocolate ganache? Chocolate ganache is truly an emulsion between the chocolate and the heavy cream. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to keep whisking this until all of the chocolate uh, and the, uh, the, the cream is melted together and mixed together. And you can see that when you do it really nice, it's, it's nice and smooth. Okay, we have a beautifully smooth texture and it, it's super shiny. Okay. So we just mix all that together, and then we're going to set that off to the side, and we're going to use that a little bit later to decorate our cake. So here you can see our chocolate cake. All I'm going to do is, is uh, turn it over on the board, and this is an important step of chocolate cake or decorating any cake, and that is to take the time to level it. Um, one of the things is people always like to you know, ice them and they're domed. Um, I'll take the chance to level it. This one looks fairly level. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, if it looked like it was crooked, um, then I would want to level it out. Now, one thing you want to know is that what was the bottom of the cake? Oop, what was the bottom of the cake is now the top. Is is going to now be the top of the cake. So you're going to take your cake circle or a plate or whatever it is you're using, and you're going to flip it. Now, one of the reasons I like flipping it this way. Okay, one of the things I like to do is put it where it's that what was the top down, because that's usually a little on the, the sticky side. Okay, and then what you're going to do is we're going to cut it. Okay, so for that, let me go ahead and get the turntable. So we'll put the turntable here, and we're going to take your cake. And it's very important when you do this. Um, I like to use a serrated knife. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, tort the cake. I keep my hand on the top and I hold the knife straight and about halfway, you know, up halfway down. And I only cut in about the thickness of my knife, okay? And the reason I do that is it's very easy if I cut straight across, it's very easy to make it crooked, okay? So as I'm going through here, I'm cutting a little bit at a time. And that way it's nice and even, and then at some point I'm going to cut all the way through. And when I do, then I can just sort of lift it up, and I'm going to set it down here on my board. And now I'm going to prepare for the next step. So here you can see we have the bottom of the cake. We're going to fill it. So I mixed up a, a chocolate buttercream, and I'm going to start by putting it on the edge. And, you know, quarter inch, three-eighths of an inch thick. And then I'm just going to kind of run my turntable and fill it up. Okay? And that's going to be our filling. And then you, you don't always have to, but uh, if you want, you can take your spatula and you can kind of spread it over to make it smooth. But if you piped it like that, it's pretty good. You want to have it right to the edge. And sometimes we, we pipe white and then lock it in with the chocolate, but this is fine to go all the way over. Then carefully take your cake. And again, what was the bottom of the pan is now going to be the top of the cake. I like to call that the factory edge because that was the edge that came out of the pan. Now, we don't have to ice with the chocolate, but you can just carefully take your spatula and go around and make it smooth. All right, that way if you have anything that's leaking out, um, you can smooth that over. And now we're ready to, to go ahead and base ice. So now we're ready to base ice. What we're going to do is we're going to use a side icer. So this is a pastry bag. 
um, and then it has the wide side icer. If you're at home, uh, you can use a spatula. I have another video that shows just using a spatula. Um, and you can also uh, just put it in a bag and, and pipe it on either way. But I like to use the side icer. And the side icer has two sides. It has a rough and a smooth. So what I like to do is put the rough in, because that's like when you, you're doing tile and you use the notch trowel. And I'll, I'll do this from the side just so you can sort of see it better in the camera. You put the rough edge up against your cake and you want to squeeze it out about the width of the tip but you want to be using enough pressure so that it sticks. Um, you don't want to just kind of go around in motion only and if you do that then it's not going to stick and it's going to fall. Then I do the top. The hardest part of the cake is this outside corner because it's icing to icing, all right? So we have to create that. So when I put this icing on, I overlap a little bit, and then I go around, okay? And then like this. I have a little crumb on there, get rid of that guy. Okay, so now the next step is we're gonna use, um, you can use a spatula, and like I said, I have another video where I use a spatula, but with this one, I like to use a bowl scraper. These are just, dollar bowl scrapers. They work really great. Um, you need a little container of hot water so that you can just dip it in the hot water and clean it off. The first thing I like to do is sort of go through the top. Um, and I just kind of hold my icer like this and just go around and just try to make the top nice and smooth. Okay. Once I'm, once I'm okay with that, then I'm going to take it on the side. And I'm going to hold it straight up and down and I'm going to go on the side. And now it's pretty much, it's looking pretty good, right? At this point, it's looking like a cake. The best thing I can tell you is don't overdo it. You just want to make it look square and look nice. So once I've gone around the sides, then it's a back and forth motion. See how it brings up all these little extras? You take your side icer, I'm sorry, your bowl scraper, and you pull those pieces in, okay? So you pull those pieces in. And sometimes you get what we call the high center because of bringing everything in, so you have to scrape it. And now once or twice go back and forth and that's it. You don't want to go crazy and overwork the icing. So I'm going to go this way with just a touch of water. I'm trying to get it nice and smooth. I'm barely putting any pressure on it. Okay, barely any pressure. And then now I'm going to go through and pull in. Okay. So I'm going to pull all those edges in, and then now I'm going to try and smooth it one more time on the top. Just kind of go around at an angle like that. Okay, I'm happy with that. Go on the edges. And you got to be careful because the more you work it, the softer the icing is going to start to get. And then we should be able to just finish by just carefully pulling these edges in. So we have nice square corners there, and, and I realize it's a circle, but it's those square edges. Okay, And you don't need a lot of water, it's just a little bit. You shouldn't have anything looking super wet or whatever, but there you have it. That's how you do a smooth cake. And I know I make it look real easy. I've been doing this for a long time. But what you want to do is just try your best. The best thing I can tell you is icing is, you know, you don't want to keep pull in the icing away that you have cake. You want to put on a good healthy amount of icing and then just smooth it and go from there. Okay. And when you're in the lab, I'll help you when you're at home. Uh, I'll be able to talk to you a little bit on our, our meats and things. But the best thing is, is just to apply it and put the icing on. So now we want to take a look at putting the borders on. And I changed my angle uh, to be pretty much like over my shoulder. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your border. And people always ask, where do I put the border? Do I put it on the cardboard? Do I put it on the cake? Put it on both. You put it right there in between the two. You want it to stick to the cake, but it should seal that gap almost like molding between the cardboard and the side of your cake. So you can use the zigzag, you could use the shell, you could use the bead. I've got a number 21 tip and I'm going to do the, the reverse. So I'm just going to start here and I'm just going to go back and forth. And again, you can do whatever one you want to do. I'm just going ahead and doing one of my favorites, okay, which is the reverse. And hopefully you're seeing it go around here, okay. 
And now that you have the top, now we're going to put the ganache drizzle on. And this is where people think that you just pour the drizzle on and it goes where you want. What you do is put your ganache in the bag, okay? And what you do is we, we call it like M's. You hold the ganache and you let it drizzle down the cake and then you move to the next one. And the next one, and then if you want it longer, you hold it longer. You want it less, if I want it really quick, just to drizzle a little bit. I give it just a little bit and give it a lot longer. And you want, you want to mix it up. You don't want it to just look like straight lines. Okay, and it should just have that natural ganache look. But in order to get that, you have to sort of guide the ganache. Okay, it's not just going to happen uh, by pouring it on the side. Okay, so you just keep going around so you get to the end. Just about there. And again, you hold it longer, it's going to go all the way down. You hold it less, it's only going to go a little bit. And then when you get to the end, you just finish. And now you can see as I turn this, you can see the ganache is different ways. It just looks really nice. It just makes for a nice design on the side of the cake. And if you didn't want to do the ganache, you could do like cookie crumbs you could throw on the side of the cake look good or little chocolate curls or you could just let it plain. Um, now we're going to put the top border on. And when you do the top border, you want it to sort of like seal, okay, um, in between where, where the edge of the cake is and the ganache is. So I'm just going to start here. And again, you could do the shell or the bead. I uh, would look good on the top. I'm just going with the reverse. And I'm trying to go slower so you can see it. And I'm just using it to, to fill it in here and just do a really nice job. And then when you get to the end, you just sort of finish. Okay. So there you can see the cake. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put um, something in the middle. And I'll just kind of mark it. And we're going to do little rosettes on the edges. And you're going to do six. So you just sort of say, okay, this one and this one, and then split the difference nice and evenly to get your six. And then just take your number 21 tip, and you're going to make the rosette. And that's just start in the middle, just go around, and then finish on the top. Around and finish on the top. And you just keep doing that. And these honestly don't have to be perfect if you're going to put decorations in them. And then in the middle, you could either do um, a, a, a larger rosette or what I'm going to show you now is a rose. So the video, I already showed you one on how to make the rose. Um, so I just want to show you that again. And you could, again, you could put a rosette, the rosette rose, a lot of the different things I showed you in the middle. Uh, but what I'm going to do is do the rose. And if you remember from the video, and I'm trying to show you a different angle here, is I would take it and make the mound. The mound is extremely important. And then make sure it's the fat end of the tip down, skinny end up. And you just go around like this, and you make a cone. The cone is the center of the flower. Okay? Then you put in your center petals. Remember, you want to put them out. And you kind of go one, two and three and then you just keep doing this okay you just keep going around until it looks like a rose you don't want to make it really huge but you don't want it to look tiny um, the other thing is that make sure you're always holding your tips out because you don't want it to look like a cabbage and then when it looks even you're finished okay where that rose looks good and then, like I said in the other video, everyone always asks, what do I do with it? This is where you take your scissors, you cut underneath the rows, put it into the middle of the cake, dip down a little bit and cut, and that releases the flour. And then, wherever you made a mark, that's where we're going to take our dark chocolate icing, and we're going to go ahead and put in little leaves. So this is the 67 leaf tip. We're just kind of going to squeeze and pull a little bit and make our leaves. And there we go. And the last thing we need to do is finish it with our chocolate decor. And we're going to use the decor that we made. So in this case, I'm going to use the diamonds. But again, you could use anything you want. What you want to do is always put them kind of the same way. So if I'm going to you know, tilt this that way, as I turn the cake, I want to keep tilting them the same way. It's important to do that. 
Um, you don't, sometimes people get confused and they start going all different directions. They should look almost like blades of a fan and that's going to make it look really sharp. So there you can see as you do that, everything just sort of starts to come together. Just kind of tweak them a little bit. Um, and, and there you have it. That's how you make uh, a really nice cake. Uh, and again, I have another video where you could decorate it a little differently. If you're at home in the lab, this is what we're going to do. Um, it has the nice chocolate. That, and then the icing is it's a, it's a milk chocolate icing. Um, it was a dark chocolate in the middle, but milk chocolate for the decor. We just need to base it. Put a border down, then we want to put down the chocolate ganache, the border on top, and then some kind of decoration on top. We'll do the six, okay, the six rosettes, and then you could either try a rose, and I can help you with it, or you could do a rosette rose, or you could just do a big rosette uh, with a larger tip and just put like maybe uh, two chocolate pieces in there. So you can have a lot of fun. So thanks for baking with me today. Can't wait to bake with you real soon right here at Mr. Polk's Kitchen.